All right, everybody, welcome back. We're diving into a listener request today. And let me tell you, this one's juicy. We're talking about what makes certain music genres just so irresistible. Like you hear it and then bam, you're hooked. Yeah, and this one gets uh, gets pretty deep too. You know, music speaks to us on such a visceral level, but we're really trying to unpack that. Like yeah. what is it about certain sounds that just grab hold of us? Ooh, right, and specifically we're gonna be looking at Nigerian and Jamaican music, two absolute powerhouses on the global music scene. And I think what's really interesting here is we're not just talking about geography, right? This isn't just like Nigeria versus Jamaica. It's about these two completely distinct uh, soundscapes, these sonic identities, and how they connect with us on such a fundamental level. Absolutely. And you know, what really got me thinking about this was this debate I heard on the Global Grooves podcast. They were going back and forth about whether Nigerian music is all about the body, you know, moving, dancing, that infectious energy, while Jamaican music goes straight for the soul. Yeah, like two chefs, right? Each one's got their own style, their own secret ingredients, and they're both serving up something incredible, but the experience is totally different. Love that. And it's so true. I remember the first time I heard Phil Lakuti, like, really listened. It just blew me away. Those polyrhythms, man. The way he blends those rhythms, it's like, your body can't help but move to it. Oh, absolutely. And I think Fela is a perfect example of what makes Nigerian music so captivating. It's got that energy, that drive that's just baked into the DNA of the music. Right. Take Afrobeats, for example. It's got roots in Fela's Afrobeat, but with this modern global spin, you know, those mm -hmm. driving rhythms, the call and response vocals, the emphasis on percussion. It's music that's meant to be felt in your bone. It's true. I mean, try listening to Burna Boy's Last Last. Yeah. Without at least like tapping your foot. It's practically impossible. Exactly. But then, you know, on the flip side, you've got Jamaican music, which often taps into something something a bit deeper, you know, a bit more reflective and introspective. Right. And on Global Grooves, they had this one guy, Trevon, who was championing Jamaican music, and he actually compared reggae to soul food. He was like, you dance to Nigerian music, but you reflect to reggae. What do you make of that? You know, I found it really interesting that both sides of the debate kept using food metaphors. It speaks to how intertwined those things are, right? Food, culture, music, it's all connected. Like in both Nigeria and Jamaica, food is more than just sustenance. It's love, it's celebration, it's community, it's an expression of identity. So true. And I feel like that connection to culture, to history, to identity comes through so strongly in the music itself. Both Nigerian and Jamaican music, they're rooted in these rich traditions, in struggles and triumphs. They carry that weight, that history in their melodies and rhythms. Absolutely. And I think that's where things get really interesting, right? Because is it really as simple as body versus soul? Or is there a more nuanced way that music moves us? Is it possible that it can be both? And and I think when you start looking at specific artists, it gets even more fascinating. Like Global Grooves brought up Fela Kuti and, and his music, man. It's revolutionary. Oh, absolutely. Fela wasn't just making music. He was a force of nature. You know, those driving rhythms, those incredible horn sections. And then the lyrics, man, he was fearless. He was challenging political corruption, speaking out against injustice. And it wasn't just about dancing, yeah. right? Although, I mean, have you ever tried to stand still during a Fela Kuti song? Right. You try it, it's impossible. But he was making you think while you moved. And that's powerful stuff. It is. And you know, it's interesting. You can really hear that legacy, that social consciousness echoed in a lot of contemporary Nigerian artists like Burna Boy, who we were talking about earlier. Oh, absolutely. There's that thread that connects them, that commitment to speaking truth, to power, to addressing social issues through their music. It's like that line from Burna Boy's last, last, you don't cast, last, last, and everybody will go chop breakfast. It's catchy, right? You hear it, you want to dance. But it's also this really powerful statement about resilience, about overcoming heartbreak. And it's universal. You know, everyone's gone through something similar. Right. It's that combination of social commentary and irresistible rhythm that gives it such staying power. And speaking of staying power, Global Grooves also got into how reggae, with its messages of peace and unity, really transcends generations. Yeah, they brought up Bob Marley, which, I mean, come on, you can't talk about reggae without mentioning Bob Marley, right? And I think it was Trevon who made the point that Marley's music wasn't just about, like, feeling good. It was about embracing a whole philosophy, a mm. way of life. It's true. When you listen to a song like Three Little Birds, it's not just a catchy tune. There's a real depth there, this sense of hope and resilience that resonates deeply with people even decades later. And musically, reggae has this way of creating that vibe, that feeling, you know, that laid back one drop rhythm where the emphasis is on the offbeat, just draws you in. It's hypnotic, almost meditative. 
And the lyrics often explore themes of social justice, spirituality, overcoming oppression. It's music that feeds the soul, you know? Yeah. It's like both genres offer this incredible catharsis, but in such different ways. Mm. With Afrobeats, you're dancing out your frustrations, your joys, everything. It's this outpouring of energy. Mm. And then with reggae, it's more about finding solace, finding comfort in the message and the shared experience. Mm. You might be swaying gently, lost in thought. Mm, yeah. And, and it's interesting because I feel like the global grooves debate kind of presented it as an either thing, you know, mm -hmm. body or soul. Yeah. But maybe it's not that simple, right? Maybe the real power of both Nigerian and Jamaican music is how it connects us not only to ourselves, but also to something bigger than ourselves. Yeah, I think you're on to something there. It's like both Nigerian and Jamaican music. They tap into this universal language, something that goes beyond words. It's true. It's that power of music to transcend language, to transcend borders, and connect with us on a purely emotional level. Totally. Like, I might not understand every single word of a Fela Kuti song, but man, I can feel it. Mm. You know, that energy, the message, it comes through so clearly. And the same with Bob Marley, right? His music resonated with people all over the world, regardless of their background, because it spoke to something universal. Exactly. At its core, it's about emotion. It's about connection. That's the power of music. Couldn't agree more. It's about tapping into something larger than ourselves, finding a sense of belonging, a shared experience through these sounds, these rhythms. So maybe instead of this body versus soul thing, mm. it's more helpful to think of it as a spectrum. Ooh, I like that. A spectrum of musical experience. Right. Like on one end, you've got that pure, raw energy of Afro beats making you want to get up and move. And then on the other end, there's that introspective, soul-stirring vibe of reggae inviting you to just sink in and reflect. But it's not like a rigid line, right? There's overlap. There's interplay between the two. Exactly. You can have reggae songs that make you want to dance, and you can have Afrobeats tracks that make you really stop and think. That's the beauty of it all, isn't it? There's no right or wrong way to experience music. It's about what moves you, what speaks to your soul, regardless of genre. Couldn't have said it better myself. So to everyone listening, if you're only familiar with one of these genres, I urge you, go out there and explore. You might just discover